It's uh, day two of the uh, Universal Road Trip, and we are in Coney Island, Brooklyn. Very popular spot. A lot of people know it for the uh, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Coney Island's a real popular summertime spot. Started basically like in the uh, 1830s and 40s as a like a vacation spot, and it's kind of become real popular since. You get the beach, you get the boardwalk, you got all these uh, iconic rides. Uh, you got the original Nathan's, which we're gonna go uh, hit up in a little while. But uh, some of these guys have never been here before. I mean, we got our special guest here today, Tyler Cohen, from New Jersey, and he's never been to Coney Island. And Gary Turner, as we know, has never left Edison, New Jersey. So That's correct. it's the first trip out of the house, and. He's here for the first time. Very good cultural experience. Yeah, and now from Georgia, never yes, been here. Yesterday was Tyler's birthday too. That's right, happy birthday. Thank you. We're celebrating Thank you. today. Cool, cool. And you know, that crazy guy in the back, he, all the places he's been in the world, he's never been to Coney Island. So they're experiencing a little bit of culture today uh, in this iconic spot. Order 85 town pull up. That's just the night gray. Get on the east side. All right, so right behind us is the, uh, the Cyclone. It's a pretty famous, iconic roller coaster here in Coney Island. And nobody is happier than me today that it's not open. I've been on it, scared to death of it. Uh, if you look closely, it's made out of wood. It's like rickety. I swear some of the bolts are loose on that thing. And then unfortunately we had Hurricane Sandy, so it was under salt water. So I'm real happy with that going on today. But you know, over the years you come here, you know, in the summer as a kid, and you come here each year, and you, you go on the ride, and eat some hot dogs, and they got really good custard here and stuff. But this roller coaster, it's not high, but it's damn scary. Maybe I'm just being a little girl about it. I don't you are. think I would get on it. That's the only animal. Frog legs. They uh, they're actually very popular in the Chinese restaurants in uh, Montreal, all the stuff. And they taste like just like chicken. And there's a way to eat them. Spread the legs like that. You see this butthole right there. <laughs> yeah, just eat it like that. Good? Like chicken? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude. It's like chicken, but um what? what? He's been oh, doing that all here. week. He tried it. The bone there, the bone, the frog bone. The frog bone there. That's just like chicken. You guys may have, may see it on ESPN every 4th of July, right here. In this spot, they have the famous Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Now, it's not 4th of July, and we don't have Joey Chestnut or Kobayashi here. What we do have is two heavyweights, Antoine and Nat. They're going to do their own little version of uh, the Hot Dog Eating Contest. So. As soon as you gentlemen are ready. Are you guys ready? No. Nope. There's ketchup on this shit. There's no ketchup in the hot dog eating contest. All right, whoever finishes first. Six hot dogs each. Ready? Three, two, one, go. My bet's on that. Antoine's got a new technique. Squish the dog. Nat's going with the big bites. That's his technique. I'm gonna go take a nap and come back. Later. Go ride the cyclone a few times. I got five hot dogs done in four minutes. Four less. Not done. Made though. Made though. What? Done. Made. Made. Slow motion. 
On the number five. Done. Antoine, four minutes, 45 seconds. Matt will have to set, settle for second place. We're in the back here in the Universal van. Going to be hitting up a retailer right now in a few minutes. And uh, I got here Universal Real Gains, Gary the only Gains. weight gainer that you should be using, Gary. full of clean carbs, no sugar, a low Gains. sugar. Clean, low clean fat. carbs, and it's uh, low fat, tastes great. And I'm going to load up here. Gary, Can I make it fit my macros? Fuck your macros. Gary. Is that your favorite protein, Gary? Yeah, it's my favorite protein. It's a fucking mess, is what he's doing. No, you're a fucking mess. You're making a mess, look at you. All right, what's on my do you know the Brooklyn alphabet? Didn't I teach it to you? Yeah, but then, uh, yeah. yeah. Say the Brooklyn alphabet. One, two, three. All right, pal. This is just drift off. <laughs> fucking A, fucking B, fucking C, fucking D. <laughs> All the way to fucking Z, pal. That's it. <laughs> Anton Vaillant. We are here in Brooklyn at a natural vitamins uh, supplement store. Um, the store is huge. They got basically everything. This is probably one of the largest array of uh, universal products that I've seen in one store. Um, everything from their BCAA stack, BCAA Pro, all the way up to you know real games. You know, they have a whole shelf of potassium. A whole shelf of this. This is just a, a, a tenth, a tenth of what they have. Probably you know, they have stuff scattered throughout the store. Um, very impressed to see our products, you know, in this depth, in one store, you know, you, you go to a lot of stores, you see, you know, the top five most popular ones, but it's very uh, good to see, you know, the majority of our stuff uh, being carried in this store. All right, guys, we're in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, at one of the best supplement stores in New York. Uh, amazing, huge store with huge selection, natural vitamins. I'm here with Serge, who is the proprietor of the business. Uh, he really supports the whole bodybuilding community. He has a huge event um, every year, the day after the New York Pro. And Serge, maybe you could just tell us about the store, and then you can also tell us about your event as well. Uh, it's, we've been in business 42 years. It's a family-owned business. Um, passed down to me from my parents. Uh, and ever since I was little, I always used to follow bodybuilding. Always into it, back in the days with uh, all these other companies. Universal, obviously, was always yeah. there. And um, we just uh, always stay in the bodybuilding circuit. We have uh, the show you mentioned, our monster event. It's usually the day after the uh, New York Pro. A yeah, nice little turnout, it's free for everybody. He's, he's being modest because it's a huge turnout. The line's down the block. He's got like every big name in the sport is here. You get to meet him. You know, you come here, you meet everybody for free, pick up a lot of samples and stuff. It's a really, really cool event. Cool. Check him out. Greenpoint, Brooklyn, Natural Vitamins. In this world, there's a lot of hate, lots of uh, racism, all that stuff. But the way, the road, the diversity, all the colors here, different diversity, different races, religion, all that stuff, the road that's going to unify them is right here on this wall. And it's going to lead to one thing. If we all unite and take the same road to happiness, the result is going to be very, very, very happy right there. Tonight, tonight, have a good time with your friends. Enjoy the fact that you're alive. Do it well and farewell, my good friends. Here we are on Bogart Street at Queens. Another uh, art demonstration with Antoine and myself. And um, we're doing correct with it at this stage of the day. And, um, I want to talk about this piece of art. It's very, very unique. Very, very unique. You got here the blue pigeon. Blue giant pigeon. And uh, you know, America had the symbol of liberty is the eagle. But here at Queens, on Bogart Street, their symbol is the giant blue pigeon, which means just a big ass bird with a lot of crap.
Rico's Chicken. Pollo de Rico. Eh. Eh. Um, buenos días. ¿Cómo estás, mi amigo? Uh, ahora, y de, uh, mi coman es uh, Pollo de Rico. Rico's Chicken. I tried to talk Spanish. I don't know if it worked. <laughs> but uh, there's a gym right down the street over there. We had a uh, park over there. We had a five minutes walk up. And uh, we're actually gonna eat some chicken or beef or whatever, and then we're gonna go train later. So uh, that's it. That's where we're at. So we're at Rico's Chicken, and apparently it's um, really awesome Colombian food, unfortunately. Cannot eat. I am two weeks out from my show, um, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. I'll, I can eat when I'm done. Um, I'm weighing out my food right now, eating some asparagus and spinach and chicken, and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> Colombian, Colombian platter. Plantain. Sausage looking thing. Yep. Avocado. I have no idea what that is. A steak. And this is a skin of some sort. This is banging, dude. They just know exactly how to season everything, right? The steak is seasoned so good. There's a steak, fried eggs, got rice, plantains, which is money, and coleslaw. Awesome Colombian food. Man. So I Outside of Rico's Chicken, we're here in Middle Village, Queens, New York, and we just had an amazing Colombian food meal. And this is typical in these type of neighborhoods, there's a lot of different ethnicities. You can walk down the street and try, you know, 10 different types of food. Uh, this food was, in my opinion, was fantastic. I'm gonna let uh, Tyler, our special guest for today, uh, give us his little review of the restaurant. I thought it was great. I never had Colombian food before, but we had, we had a steak and fries, there's white rice, and two eggs, and I'll tell you what, I feel a lot heavier than I did this morning. <laughs> How good it was the seasoning on it? Too? No, the seasoning was really good, like it was on point, like it was really good, I was shocked. Just amazing. Yeah, it was really good. What'd you think? I think um, the cool thing with the, this type of food is because, say if you go to um, like a sushi place or a sushi, maybe like a Chinese place, you cannot always have like bottled or food. Over there was like bodybuilder friendly food, just like vegans and rice, and avocado, and no oil and stuff like that. So, the cool thing about it, it tastes good, it was bodybuilder friendly, and we filled up with food. And they know how to use the spices, man, that's what it is. Country boy, what'd you think? I never oh, had, never had um, Colombian food either, I thought it was great. Um, ate steak and rice, and um, what else was Crispy, uh, you had the crispy pork skin. Oh, how yeah. was that? I, it was alright, I didn't eat the whole thing though. Well, it tasted good. It did taste good, but I did not eat it. And he never heard of a plantain good. until today either. That's his first time. It was good. He calls them bananas in Georgia. <laughs> That's what they are, is bananas. Fried bananas. Good stuff. Check them out. Alright, we're at Coliseum Gym and... Well, this is awkward. We're at Coliseum, Coliseum Gym here in Middle Village, Queens. About to go in and uh, get a workout, but before the workout, um, we've got a special event here happening tonight. There's an animal barbell club and a seminar. Two of our animal athletes, uh, Kevin Oak and Larry Williams, train here. Two great, great powerlifters. This gym is known as the hardcore gym out here. I haven't been in yet, but I've seen pictures and videos. Open 24 hours. A lot of strong dudes in this gym. Real hardcore, gritty gym. So we're going to get in there and hit it. Most people don't work on their dreams. Why? One is because of fear. The fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success, what if they do and I can't handle it? The other thing is that most people, ladies and gentlemen, they get comfortable. They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching, they stop pushing themselves. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself, it's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life, people who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people who are hungry, people who are unstoppable and unreasonable, people who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, 
that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. It's not going to be easy. Why you must be unreasonable because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. You've got to be an unreasonable person. You've got to be an uncommon person. I'm the one, I'm the one, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. If you want to do anything worthwhile in life, you've got to be hungry. You gotta be hungry. You gotta be hungry. And if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stir and pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or thaw, sickness or pain or body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if darkened and grim you besiege and beset it, you'll get it. I saw you know you had a good workout, dude. There's some nasty sweat dripping off your calf like that. Huh. <laughs>